build your audience fast with joint ventures. Welcome to Joint Venture Success Made Easy with your host, Marie Grace Berg. Every week, she'll bring you tips, tricks, tools, case studies, interviews, question and answer to help you launch your business to the stratosphere. Now, here's your host, Marie Grace Berg. Today's case study features Tammy Lane. Her recent launch called FB Fawcett garnered almost 5,000 opt-ins and almost 50,000 in sales with only six joint venture partners. JV Nation, Marty Graceberg here and welcome to the JV Success Made Easy Show. How to build your audience fast and create cash flow on demand with joint ventures. Today we'll be covering part two of this three-part series with Tammy Lane. Tammy Lane, welcome to part two. On the previous episode, we've covered your story as a case study for our listeners. And if you haven't watched the, or listened to the episode, JV Nation, I highly encourage you to do that. You can go directly to www.jvsuccessmadeeasy.com forward slash zero five. And today we'll continue and talk about the JV process. So, okay, so let's dig a little bit about uh, creating that irresistible offer because I know for uh, most of our listeners are coaches, uh, authors, and speakers, and a lot of them are offering either one-on-one coaching or group coaching. Regardless, it's really important to create an offer that is irresistible, that is clear, that is appealing to your market. So share with us what's the process of uh, how you create this irresistible offer. Okay, sure. You know, I have a really in-depth training I go through on exactly that. Uh, It's a bonus for the people who join Facebook Faucet. So I won't go, I won't be able to go into all the details. But basically, if you can put yourself in the shoes of who your ideal client is, and not just they're a 35 to 40 year old woman who's wanting to start a business, but really to think about that person as an individual um, to so that you can have empathy with that person about where exactly they are in their life. Uh, what what are they thinking about at night? What what are they really struggling with? What are their hopes and dreams? As an individual person, rather than thinking of your ideal clients as a big group, that way, when you're putting your offer together, you can really make sure that it's going to connect with exactly what they want. Because, of course, the goal with your hot offer is to put something in front of your ideal clients that they just instantly know that they want and need. And that just makes the whole selling process go a lot more smoothly. Um, you know, if you have a lukewarm offer, it's really hard to make any of these things work, whether it be Facebook ads or joint ventures, it's gonna be really difficult to be successful with a lukewarm offer. You really, really need to think about um, addressing those number one problem that your ideal clients have in terms of whatever the work is that you do to make sure that they feel like it's hot as soon as you put it in front of them. Does that make sense, Marie Grace? Totally makes sense. And I love what you said about putting yourself in the shoes of your ideal client. That is, that's it. That's a secret. Try to imagine that you are your ideal client. What, is their, what are their needs, their frustrations, their problems, their desires, their pains? You know, that's how you really know, okay, will this offer resonate with them? Because literally, you are really... Uh, you you are really you need to capture them you are you need to to uh, be able to uh, read what's in their mind be able to touch their hearts and that's the yeah. beauty of um, y- yeah of what you said about uh, really to- uh, really thinking in terms of putting yourself in on, on the shoe on, on your client's shoes so that way you can learn more about what they need and what, and what they want to offer okay so we get that offer we get the name of our offers for example we got that name we got that offer on creating the 
the pages so because we have the opt-in pages we have the freebie we have the the videos if they ha if you have to, yeah, if you have to create videos these are just like uh, uh, creating goodwill with your with your prospects and also getting them to know you like and trust you as well as the offer pages so you mentioned about using infusionsoft for those people that uh, don't use infusionsoft i uh, i also recommend lead pages or click funnels what other platforms that they can use to build these pages to build these opt-in pages and if there's somebody out there for our listeners from our listeners who doesn't know what an opt-in page is it's basically a web page where you direct your customers or your prospects by entering their name and email address so that they can get a freebie for example as a gift by being on their list or by by them raising their hands wanting to learn more about what your offer is yeah and so the mar we use Optimize Press. I like it because it's really, really flexible and really, really easy to use. And because that's such a big technical hurdle for lots of our lots of people who are especially just starting into their businesses or just getting it online, we create a marketing mini site for our clients in Facebook Faucet uh, using Optimize Press. So we create that all for them so that there's no technical hangups. Uh, but I do recommend that if you're newer to online and this technical stuff feels a bit crazy to you, that you either find a program like we offer where we do it for you, or that you really h look at hiring somebody to do that for you, rather than going out and learning a whole new system, because chances are it's only going to cost you a few hundred dollars, and it's going to save you weeks or months of time and hassles and headaches uh, if you're doing that. That is so important. I love that you share that because you know what, we we don't have we we shouldn't be focused. I mean, literally, we shouldn't be focusing on the tech staff. This part of our business we can outsource, we can delegate, and we need to because otherwise, we cannot be master of all trades. You know, we have. I mean, there are certain parts of our business that we have to do ourselves, but the tech. I believe that that is supposed to be outsourced and you can get a lot of help from other people from uh, like for example with Tammy and her team they provide this done for you service you can also get that from other places like Upwork or freelance.com or even Fiverr or even other forums that you can network with and ask people to help you out with the tech stuff I mean getting your opt-in pages your content pages your sales pages that is not your your job your job is to create the offer and the contents I mean some of them you probably can outsource as well but the tech stuff the um, the putting up the pages the graphics for example outsource those and I'll make sure to provide under the resource notes some of the resources that you have mentioned and also some of the resources that I use that way they can also look into outsourcing those and know where to go to get help as well because that's really important to get help all right yes. so yeah so do you recommend okay so you get the offer you get the pages up the contents as well and the pages up do you recommend testing your offer first before getting joint ventures to promote your offer Absolutely. Uh, you know, any partner who's done any amount of uh, work in terms of having a list or anything is going to expect that you're going to have have had people through your what's called your sales funnel already, which is people coming and opting in and requesting your free gift and that you've sold some of your packages. And so it's really uh, critical that you do a small launch uh, to start with, whether that be with Facebook ads or whether you, you know, get out there and pound the pavement for a bit to get your first clients in to prove that it works and that all the pieces are working. Because you know, there's a lot of pieces to manage in your sales funnel. And then just adding to it is all the pieces that you would need to manage with a JV launch. And so it's really critical that you just get all those pieces together uh, to have the sales funnel working first uh, before you try and add in all the JV stuff as well. All right. So really important to test your offer. And one way to do that, just like what Tammy shared with us, is launching on your own list or an, a Facebook ads. And that is the easiest and the quickest, I believe, uh, to test your offer is to do a Facebook ads, um, especially a custom targeted ads. It's really important. So what will be the conversions or the, the numbers that our listeners can look for 
when they are doing search, so for example, they are doing Facebook ads to test their offer, what are the numbers or conversions that they should be looking for? Well, we're generally looking for something under a dollar uh, per click so that uh, you're getting in uh, new leads to your opt-in page for less than a dollar. And then, um, so each piece of your sales funnel would have a different conversion rate that we're that you're looking for. So clicks, you'd want them to cost somewhere under a dollar. When you get to your opt-in page, you want at least about 40 to 50 percent, almost half of the people who come to your opt-in page. Uh, you'd be looking for them to opt in, give you their name and email addresses, um, because that's going to you know, sometimes you can even get up towards 60 or 70%, but 40 to 50% is a good place to start. And then you can look at tweaking it out to get better results even. And then you really want to make sure that your sales offer is converting somewhere between at least three and 5% of the people who are coming into your sales funnel, you want to be converting into clients. Mm, those are great numbers and I'm taking notes and I'll make sure to have this on our show notes as well. So it's important to test all the pages of, sales of your sales funnel. So for example, for your opt-in page, you were looking into between 40 and 50% conversion, meaning at least 50 to 50% of people seeing your opt-in subscribe or opt-in as a lead. And then for your sales offer, we are looking into between three to 5% conversion. That's, those are great numbers. I hope you are taking notes as I am because that's really important part of this process of getting JV ready before you even reach out to your joint ventures joint venture partners, you really have to have an offer that converts because you don't want to be testing your offer to them. I mean, that's so, it's so unfair for them, for your joint venture partners to be, to, uh, be, test, to be testing your offer with their list. It's not fair. So you have to do this. Uh, this is part of the pre preparation. You have to test your offer outside of your joint venture partners. And that's also one way of telling them that, okay, my offer converts this. That would also encourage them to promote you. Uh, and offer their uh, and offer your program to their list. So it's really important that you understand this and uh, that you do this one. And uh, Tammy is, is really an expert on this Facebook ads. I highly recommend that you dig into this one to uh, test your offer, especially before you even reach out to your joint venture partners. Okay, so Tammy, after they, they test their offer, what are other steps that they need to do before reaching out to their joint venture partners? So really, it all comes down to the results that are happening as you're testing out your sales funnel. If you're getting really good results and you're bringing in clients and all of your technical pieces are working in terms of that, you know, marketing mini site I was talking about, the sales funnel of your opt-in page and your sales page. So you want to make sure technically that things are working right and that you're bringing in clients. If you're not bringing in clients, then you need to step back and look at which pieces uh, you need to modify and test out uh, in terms of maybe you're not getting opt-ins on your opt-in page, your opt-in rates like 10%. So obviously you want to look at your opt-in page and see why that is and make some improvements there and get a little bit of some more people through uh, to make sure that your changes have resulted in better results. But once that whole piece is working, then I think it's the perfect time to step out and then look for how you're going to do the affiliate tracking, get your affiliate software in place. Um, and that can be sort of done in conjunction with you starting to build relationships uh, with your potential joint venture partners. And uh, really that can, you're building the relationships can start at any time uh, through as soon as you have the idea that you want to start your business. Obviously, um, it's good to be looking for people who you really can relate to, who you can support each other in your businesses. Um, and then once you have the affiliate software in place, you can begin to uh, start approaching them uh, to see if how you can support them and how they can support you in your business. Awesome. You know, we've covered a lot today, but that's that's just part 
to two of this three-part series with Tammy Lane. On the next episode, we'll continue and address some of your JV questions on the topic, how to get JV ready. So stay tuned for our next episode this coming Friday. And don't forget to send in your questions to ask at mariegraceberg.com or you can leave us a voicemail by going to www.jvsuccessmadeeasy.com. We will play your questions live on the show if you leave us a voicemail on the site. And I really encourage you to do that now. You know, it would mean the world to me. But most importantly, it will help me serve you better by letting me know what topics you want us to cover here on the podcast and what questions do you have about joint ventures. So go to www.jvsuccessmadeeasy.com and send us your questions through voicemail or via email at ask at mariegraceberg.com. And uh, lastly, if you are enjoying this podcast, and I hope you do, please, please leave us a five-star review on iTunes by going to www.jvsuccessmadeeasy.com forward slash my iTunes, jvsuccessmadeeasy.com forward slash my iTunes. We read every review you send us and we even feature them on the site as a way to inspire others as well. So get involved with this mission to inspire others. All right. Until then, this has been Marie Graceberg signing out. Feeling inspired and empowered to get started? Get your free guide to building your audience fast with joint ventures. Go to www.mariegraceberg.com slash guide.